You ready to get to work? Behind me, 2006 Toyota Camry, we're gonna be replacing the front wheel bearings. Now these are press-in style wheel bearings. I'll show you how to do that. Let's get started. First, we'll jack the vehicle up, put it on jack stands, pull off our front tire. So we're gonna pull the caliper off with the bracket. Before we pull our bracket off, we're gonna put a screwdriver right in here and we're gonna move this whole piston over, our whole caliper that squishes the piston in and gives us some slop. That way when it goes time to put everything back together, it'll go on easier. Let me get a little more slack here. There we go. Let's take off our hose bracket up here first, 12 millimeter. There, that'll give us a lot of hose slack. We'll just pop that off. All right, have a hook like this handy or some bailing wire or something because we're gonna take this and suspend it from the strut. 17 mil. Okay, we'll hold on to it. And we'll take this whole thing off. There, just hang it out of the way, perfect. We'll remove our rotor. Now, if yours doesn't come off as smooth as mine did, you can just tap on it with a hammer and that vibration will bust it loose. Now let's turn our wheel back all the way to the other side. It'll give us access to our tie rod. Before pulling off our tie rod, we wanna get our axle nut off. Now I should have mentioned this before, I just got so excited and started pulling stuff off. It's best with an impact. If you own a good impact, that's great. If you do not, what we need to do is bust this nut before removing our brake stuff. You can put a flathead screwdriver in the brake fin. Let me show you right here the brake fin, put a screwdriver in there. And as you go to break this loose, that screwdriver will hold it in place while you get your nut and a breaker bar on it. If you don't have a good impact and you got this far and you're like, oh man, I forgot, that's okay. There's one more option. Take a long pry bar. You can put it in between a couple of wheel studs. There, like that. And then as you go to break the nut loose, you have this holding it in place. So just a couple options. Whichever one you choose, you wanna put a little bit of penetrating fluid or a lubricant on these threads especially if you live in a rusty spot. We do wanna turn this. Perfect. So right here in this little keyway, you wanna take a thin chisel or screwdriver, and we're gonna pop that up and unlock it. All right, let me show you real quick, a little closer. So just in this little keyway, we wanna unlock that. When we put on the new axle nut, you want a new axle nut, we'll repin that down and lock it back in place. All right, now we're ready to pull this off. So for the axle nut, we want a 30 millimeter 12 point socket. It has to be 12 point. Put that in, see if we can buzz it off. Perfect. Make sure this can move because we want to take this out. Perfect, okay, nice. That's always the part that scares me. Sometimes they'll get seized inside. So it looks like we're gonna be home free. Let me move you around, we'll get our tie rod off. For our tie rod, we have a little cotter pin underneath. Let me get something to pry that up with. Screwdriver, there we go. Just gonna pinch those together. Okay, knock it through. Now sometimes these like to get rusty and not wanna go all the way through. Having a pair of side cutters can help. Just get a little bite on one end. Let me get underneath and see. I just want that head to start coming out a little and I can grab it with my side cutters. Okay, almost got it. There we go. Nice, got it. That is also a 17 millimeter, at least on mine. If your tie rod has been replaced before, it might be a different nut size. So far, so good. Now we just wanna cause a little vibration right here and we'll pop this up. You don't have to hit too hard, just a little vibration. There we go. I'll just set that aside. Now's a good time to replace this if it's worn out or bad or the boots all galled up. Not a bad time. Okay, next we have our wheel speed sensor, 10 millimeter. We wanna get that off next. Okay, now this car is just too easy. If yours does not come out that smooth, sometimes you just need a flathead screwdriver and slowly wiggle underneath it and pop it off. Feel bad, because this has been going so smoothly. All right, sweet. So now we'll pop off our strut. Our strut bolts are a 22 millimeter. These are non-adjustable, so we don't have to mark anything. So we'll pull those off. The other side spins a little. Hold it with another 22 or just a little pair of pliers just to prevent it from spinning. Now that we have our strut bolt nuts off, before we pull the bolts out, we wanna take off our wheel hub. For that, we're gonna need a puller. All right, we just have to go over three studs. And we'll use our old lug nuts to keep it in place. Okay, just finger tight is all we need. We have our slide hammer, thread that in. 
Then it has a spot for a little security nut in the back. We'll just thread that nut on a few times. All right, just in case these threads give out, you don't go flying across the room. Okay, that's it. Let me set you back and watch the action. Whew. All right, it's slowly coming. Just gotta keep whacking on it. There she is. Okay, now we can push our strut bolts through. Disconnect our strut. Now our knuckle will slide forward. And our CV axle can just come out of the back and out of the way. There we go. Okay, let me move you in closer and show you what I'm looking at. Let's take our dust shield off real quick. 10 millimeter. Okay, so now in the back here, gotta get you a good angle. So we do not have to pull the knuckle off. We can do everything right here. So we have this little shield here we pull off. It's a flathead screwdriver. Should get it up. Need a little bigger screwdriver. I don't know where all my screwdrivers went. Should be able to just pop up. Really, you're embarrassing me. If you have the right screwdriver, this should come out pretty easy. There we go. So that's it. That's all I'm trying to pull off. Now there's a snap ring inside. Pick some of that corrosion away. I like using just a pair of needle nose pliers. It'll get in there right on that clip. Just a little tip, I don't have a good screwdriver, but if you take a screwdriver and tap on that clip and start to get it to rotate freely, that can bust it loose. This one doesn't look too bad. We're gonna try again. There we go. That's the clip. And we'll be reusing this clip so you can wire brush it off or make it look really good. Now the wheel bearing presses out in this direction. So let's hook that tool up. So the tool we need is this wheel bearing puller set. And when you open it up, it has all kinds of adapters. Because the wheel bearing presses out on this side, that's where we put our receiving cup. So if just find one of these cups. We want it to go on the outside. So bigger than the bearing. So it's probably this one here. Maybe even the biggest one. We'll just use the biggest one for good measure. This second size one could work. Okay, so to match this, you want a stopper. So that goes on this side. Okay, we got our through bolt. Ugh, pop this out. There we go. So through bolt, we got our nut for the other side and a couple of washers. So now on this end, we want one of these. We just want it to be big enough to go around the entire wheel bearing. Oh, first time, perfect. So we want it big enough to fit on the rim. Let me get the new wheel bearing. So this is the new wheel bearing. You want this big enough to fit on the whole thing and to fit through the hole. So that should be it, just like that. Okay, so now we put that on one side. We'll have a washer. We'll put this through like that. Put this on this side all the way through like that. And then we'll get the other washer and then the nut. Okay, perfect. Now I'm gonna get a little bit of lubricant and then I'll show you how I have this all set up a little closer. Just gonna lube the threads and the washer. Okay, so this is how I have it. This is the receiving cup, and then this is the driver over here. So as you tighten this bolt or that nut, it squishes everything together. Well, this side can't move because it's pushed up against the knuckle. This side is the only side that can move, and it'll push that wheel bearing all the way through into the receiving cup. So that's the idea. Now let's watch it work. We can do this by hand. It's a 32 mil nut and a 27 mil bolt. I'll put that on. Got my breaker bar up here to hold it. Now I have power tools, so I'm not gonna do this by hand. We'll just tighten her up. All right, there we go. Let me show you real quick. You can see it separating. Hopefully you can see in there where the bearing race is now pulling up away from its seat. I'll put a little arrow on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, we'll keep hitting on it. We are almost there. Woo, man. Got it. So now the wheel bearing is captured in the cup. Let's get this out and show you. There. Oh, so there's the wheel bearing right there. So that took a lot of muscle for this. The impact gun was working hard. So you can imagine doing that by hand. It'd be pretty challenging. All right, let's clean this up real quick. And we'll press in our new bearing. I'm just gonna wash it out with a little brake clean. It's a little compressed air. Just to get all the grooves, no grit. 
So now I'm gonna coat it with a little bit of silicone paste, just as a lubricant as we press this thing in. And move that around. It'll also be like a corrosion inhibitor too for the future. Now I'll take our new one, make sure it's good and clean. And we'll do the same thing. A little bit of lubricant. Rub that around. Okay. Now there is not a front and a back, but I like putting the part number to the back. That way you can see it if needed. So we'll set that in just like that. For your reference, if you're purchasing the same kit, the adapter I used to press it out with is a 955-15. They're all numbered. So that's, that's what I used to press it out with. And then the receiver was the biggest receiver. So now to press it in, we need one that spans over the whole thing. So that's a little too small. There we go. That is a 955-19. So that goes over the whole thing. That'll be on this end, just nice and flat. Now on the front end, we need one of these that spans over the whole side. So bigger is better. Just as long as it's this, these big flat ones, you can use one of these receivers or these yeah, caps as well. Really doesn't matter. Yeah, we'll use that. So this will go on here with our through bolt. This will go on here, nice and flat. That's gonna press it in. And then this goes on. Let's move this. Make sure everything lines up nice and flush. How these bearings start is really important. If it starts crooked, you'll be fighting it the whole time. So make sure it starts straight. So now it's the opposite. So we're still squishing this thing together, only now this end can move and this bottom end can't move. So now it'll just suck it in and this side will be driven down. And we'll just do that till it bottoms out. All right, let's lube this up again real quick. I'm just repositioning. All right, let's see if that's bottomed out. You should be able to tell from underneath. Uh, not quite. I can tell just by the clamp up here. It needs to go down just a little further. Maybe like another 16th or so, not very much. I'm gonna suck down this up here. Okay. Because this is a beefier nut, it might actually be better. I was using the impact from down here. Use the impact on the nut. It really doesn't matter, but it might make the tool last longer. I think they even tell you not to use an impact, but who's gonna follow that advice? All right, perfect. All the way flush. We can get our C-clamp in. So on the C-clamp, I'm also gonna put a little bit of silicone paste, just as a lubricant. You can use anti-seize if you want. It's just gonna be a little corrosion inhibitor. It's not hypercritical, but why not, right? Okay. Now I do like to give it a little tap. I just like to see it spin in there. All right, nice. Now we got our dust cap. Should be able to tap in. Oh, let me stop, back it up. You got this little hole. That hole has to go where the wheel speed sensor goes. Brr. Let's do that. Okay, perfect. You just get excited sometimes. You want it to all go back together. Okay, bottoms out. So this is a very important step that we have to do first. Before pressing in our hub, we need to put our dust shield on. If we forget, then we'll cry because you can't put this on after the hub is pressed in. So we'll put this on just like that. Not like that, like that. There we go. Feed in our bolts. Now snug those down. They don't have to be crazy tight, they're just little bolts. Okay, for our hub, we want one to go just right inside perfectly. That is gonna be a 95506. And you want this flat side here. It has a groove, we want that facing out. So nice and flat against the bearing, perfect. And then on our hub on this side, we want the groove. And this is a 95515, just fits right over there. Then we'll put our bolt through here, put that in like that. Get our washer, put a little lube on it, and then our nut. We want this to start as flush as possible. Now I'll get my impact. I'm just gonna suck it down till it bottoms out. And that's it. The hub goes in pretty easy. All right, now we're just gonna make sure it spins. Perfect. Now on our splines here, on our CV axle, we're gonna put a little bit of anti-sneeze. Just a little bit. If we have to, it'll come out easier in the future. 
Get that all on. Now we don't want it on our threads, just on the splines. Now we'll aim this back in. Okay. Get the splines to line up. Okay. Put in our strut. Lower bolt first is usually the easiest. There we go. Then we want to push the CV axle in until we get some threads poking out and then we can suck it in the rest of the way with our nut. Get our nut and suck it in a little. Sometimes the new hub splines and the old axle splines just need a little help to get along. Shouldn't be crazy, but just a little assistance to suck it in. Okay, get those on. All right, we'll torque them. I'll throw the spec on the screen. All right, now we'll put our axle nut on all the way and torque it. Now in order to torque it, we could do this and then tighten it down, torque it to spec, just suck it in all the way. And you just wanna suck it in until it bottoms out and then we'll get our torque. Once we have our torque, we're gonna put a little dimple right here in that keyway just to lock that nut so it won't back out. Doesn't have to be a big dimple, just a little, little dimple. That way if it has to come off in the future, it'll be easy to come off. All right, now we have our wheel speed sensor. That's easy to go in. Now if you want, you can put a little lube on it so it slides in its hole better. Clean it off if it's fuzzy with metal and stuff. I'll just put that right in there. And torque on this does not need to be very tight. So just G and S, good and snug. Put our tie rod back on. And we're gonna want a new cotter pin for that. Just suck it down and get a torque. All right, and then after torquing it, if that hole doesn't line up, that castle with the hole, then we just wanna go to the next castle. So we don't wanna back it off, we just wanna tighten it to the next one. A little more, perfect. We'll get a new cotter for that. So now let's turn the wheel the other way, and we'll get our caliper back on. Put our rotor on, take one of our lug nuts, bolt it down all the way, and that'll hold the rotor in place. We can take this down, make sure everything is still in place. Our pads are in place. Make sure that this isn't twisted. It should slide right over because we gave ourselves a little extra, a little extra room. There we go. Put these bolts in. Suck them down and torque them. All right. Put our hose back in. And it's also torqued to GNS. We have our ABS wiring bracket here. Just clip in. There we go. And that's it. Next thing we want to do is our brake dust shield. Just make sure it's not hitting on that rotor. See, like right here at the bottom, it's, it's hitting. Just push it away, push it away. Otherwise, you'll get a squeak as you drive and you have to pull the tire all back off again. That is it. We'll put the tire back on, lower it. If all you're doing is one side, take it for a test drive. Make sure that noise is gone if that was your issue. I do recommend doing both sides though. If this side is bad, the other side's probably not far behind it. But if you're trying to save money, doing one side is just fine. All right, that is it. Because it's a press in bearing, it's a little more involved, but with the right tool, you get her done. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comment down below. Like, subscribe. See you on the next one.